Nobel laureate Cajal faced a trouble. Just as he lit the torch leading to the soul, physics sent down an iron law, blocking the way for brain science. In 1873, physicist Abbe used a cold math to prove that no optical microscope could ever exceed half the wavelength of light waves, about 200 nanometers. This meant the 20 nanometer synaptic gap that determined love and sorrow would stay hidden. For nearly a century, this Abbe curse hung like a cloud, but scientific breakthroughs often stem from the cunning evasion of rules. In the 1990s, physicist Hull was reading a quantum optics textbook. A spark hit him. If we can't shrink the spot of light, could everything around it be turned off? He first excited an area with a beam of light, then turned off the fluorescence on the outer circle with a donut-like extinguishing light, leaving only a nanoscale shining spot. This is the Stead microscope. It forcibly erects the curse of physics and brings the resolution close to the molecular scale. Almost simultaneously, across the ocean, Batsker and Moner, respectively, came up with another cheating method. If we can't see all cells at once, let them speak up one by one. They used special fluorescent proteins to make neurons flash randomly and independently in the dark. Each flickering position was sharp and clear. Through tens of thousands of snapshots and superimposed on all positions, they rebuilt an ultra-clear image beyond the limit. These two genius ideas tricked physics jointly, won the 2014 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Cajal's hand-drawn static forest finally turned into a circuit diagram that could be infinitely magnified. From then on, we can gaze into the fragmented thoughts in the minds of Alzheimer's patients, trace imbalanced signals in a depressed heart. But even seeing the circuits, life secrets still hide in soft, fragile proteins. Yet when these proteins get hit by electron microscope beams, they burn to dust. This race against destruction was ended by Debosch and others. In 1982, they cooled the samples to minus 196 degrees Celsius, leaving no time for water molecules to form the ice crystals. Instead, they hardened into a glass-like amorphous ice. At this moment, life was perfectly sealed in the amber of time. With this, Henderson and others finally let humans see the atomic details of brain gears such as ion channels and receptors. This cryo-EM technology won the 2017 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Now, the magic mirror was forged, but the world inside remained silent. We need to learn to listen to the language of the brain. In 1924, Hans Berger attached electrodes to his scalp in the hope of capturing legendary spiritual energy. He failed to find the soul's electrical waves but recorded the brain's rhythmic alpha waves. This was the birth of the electroencephalogram, but it recorded the brain's choir. How could we pick out each thread of thought? The answer came from a clever eavesdropper, the patch clamp. In the 1970s, Nell and Sackman thought, to capture thoughts from the all or none nerve signals, they had to trace back to the opening of a single ion channel protein. They attached a glass microtube thousands of times thinner than a hair, sealed it onto a tiny patch of cell membrane, forming a high resistance seal. It isolated one or two ion channels completely from the outside. Then, they held their breath and heard the first faint click, a picoampere level current. It was the sound of ions passing through when individual protein molecule opened and closed, the first note of thought budding. This faint sound might be the first spark of the epileptic storm, the source of the disordered heartbeat. This technique that made neurons speak won them the 1991 Nobel Prize. With EEG and patch clamp, scientists still weren't satisfied. They wanted to know, where does thought happen? This time, they changed their mindset and stopped listening to electricity to look at blood. In 1991, Seiji Ogawa discovered that oxygen-deficient hemoglobin would disorder MRI signals like tiny magnets. Since brain activity consumes oxygen, can't we capture this magnetic changes through MRI to infer which brain areas are working? This is functional MRI, which unfolds a heat map of brain activity, allowing us to, for the first time, non-invasions. See how different areas are illuminated in sequence when humans think and dream, and even see the invisible battlefield in a PTSD patient's mind. So far, can we see the map and hear whispers? But human ambition did not end here. We wanted to become conductors, in 1987, 
neurosurgeon Benabid, while operating on a Parkinson's patient, unexpectedly discovered that high-frequency current could miraculously stop the patient's tremors. A genius idea struck him. Why destroy this target permanently? Can't we just use electrical stimulation to calm it? He immediately applied the implantable electrode device used to treat chronic pain to a Parkinson's patient. Soon, he repaid. This deep brain stimulation effectively inhibited abnormal neural activity by sending high-frequency pulses to specific nuclei. It turned a destructive therapy into a controllable and reversible neuroregulation. The success of DBS changed the destinies of countless Parkinson's patients and opened the era of programming the brain with electrodes. However, electrical stimulation is like a deep water bomb detonating in the target area, affecting all cells nearby. Scientists dreamed of a tool that can precisely tame any neuron. In 2005, Dazeroth and Boyden from Stanford University made it a reality. They envisioned that if they Here borrowed is. a light-sensitive protein gene from a green algae and then installed it on a specific type of neuron through genetic engineering technology, wouldn't those neurons get a light switch? The experiment was successful on the first try. Under the microscope, they saw the neurons discharging precisely with each light pulse in milliseconds. This technology, called optogenetics, grants scientists the supreme power to precisely activate or inhibit any group of neurons using light. This technology is also destined to win the Nobel Prize. From casting the mirror to eavesdropping and to taming, looking back at this history of neurotech, strung together by the Nobel laureates, we see an epic of humanity's continuous acquisition of divine powers. We do not know which technology will win the next Nobel Prize, but it is certain that it will once again endow us with greater strength and push us towards that ultimate question. After obtaining these powers, what will we become? Deep brain stimulation enables trembling hands to hold babies again. Optogenetics has brought blind mice back to light in the darkness. Silent pain and despair are also seen and understood under fMRI. The highest moment of science may not lie in how far we push our instruments, but in the warmth it leaves when it finally falls on a person. We exhaust everything to understand, not to conquer. We spare no effort to challenge, not to control the progress of science, but to make a person's daily life more like an ordinary day. And this might be more fascinating than becoming a god.